found that the service continues to achieve its aims of um, reaching lower tariff offenders and effectively targeting women and young people who are more likely uh, to complete a DTTO2 than a full DTTO, uh, and that con uh, continues to enjoy uh, overwhelmingly positive support from sentencers and uh, is associated with reductions in recidivism. So there clearly are uh, other measures outside of the, the conventional DTTO, which is perhaps more onerous for some people to, to comply with, but we'll continue to keep under review uh, the range of measures we have to help reduce reoffending, and that's something the Cabinet Secretary is particularly keen to, to tackle. Thank you. Question 8, Paul Martin. Uh, thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps have been taken to tackle antisocial behaviour in Glasgow province. Minister. Uh, the Scottish Government is committed to tackling antisocial behaviour to improve the lives of all our communities. I am pleased to inform that the, uh, the member that the multi agency tasking and coordinating process developed by partners, including Police Scotland, Community Safety Glasgow, Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and British Transport Police has seen combined year-on-year -year reductions in antisocial behaviour across the province area as a whole. I believe that partnership working is central to tackling antisocial behaviour in robust and meaningful ways. And, for example, I'm aware that the collaborative work between Police Scotland, housing associations and Community Safety Glasgow has targeted the issues surrounding gang fighting occurring between rival groups in the traditional schemes given these behaviours have been a blight on the area for decades. Uh, the importance of this work cannot be underestimated and we must continue to drive it forward. That is why I'm pleased to be able to confirm uh, that the multi-agency tasking and coordinating process is being reviewed to bring on board uh, more partner agencies and to ensure that the good work which has been achieved to date uh, can be sustained and further built upon in the longer term. Paul Martin. Uh, President Officer, can I recognise some of the positive, uh, a great deal of positive work has been done in tackling gang fighting in Glasgow and can I say that despite some of the publicity in respect to Easter House. Easter House is an area with very positive uh, things going on in that constituency, in that part of my constituency. But can I say it still considers to be the case that antisocial behaviour has been underreported? Uh, and I think a lot of that refers to the fact that it's still a cost associated with calling the 101 service. Uh, does the Minister agree with me that there should be no cost to anyone, no matter which mobile operator uh, they deal with, when they make a call to the 101 service? And will the government fund that to ensure that it is a free service? Minister. Uh, I certainly welcome uh, Mr Martin's positive comments and I appreciate his uh, constructive tone in terms of his, his question. The closure of, um, it's worth pointing out in terms of the, the, the 101 uh, calls issue that Mr Martin raises, that there is a fixed cost indeed of 15 pence, but that is irrespective of the length of the call, um, the time of the day the call is made or whether the call is made from a landline phone or, or indeed a mobile. Uh, and Police Scotland's website states the reason for charge being levied in calls is due to there always having been a cost associated with non-emergency calls. Having said that, I appreciate the point he's making. Clearly, we obviously try to make sure that, that um, uh, local communities have as much access to, as possible to report incidents. And clearly, if there's an, a, a situation where a, a crime is in progress or indeed uh, there's a, a fear for part, someone's safety, I would certainly encourage them to phone uh, 999. Uh, but uh, we'll certainly uh, take on board Mr Martin's points. 